<laughs> Welcome to CIS 1500 for Fall 2022. Uh, this is me, Eric Chinesky. Nice to meet you. Uh, this is my college email here. Uh, this is my cell phone. I have it a phone here on campus. It's actually right over here, um, but I'm not off it on campus. So you don't probably don't want to wait, you know, for the days that I am on campus to me to get a message. So just use my cell phone. It'll come right to me here. Uh, call or text is great. No, no big, um, no worries there. Whatever's easier for you. Um, I have standing office hours, um, Monday and Wednesday from 9 to 11 p.m. Uh, I often meet with a lot of students later in the evening because I know you folks are busy during the day. Or if the afternoons are your thing, Tuesday and Thursday from 1 to 3 p.m. Uh, happy to meet with you folks during my regular hours or other times by appointment. Shoot me an email. Let me know a couple times that work with your schedule, and I'll see what I can do. Um, generally, I can make something work. My schedule is pretty flexible. So just let me know. Um, and for these, appoint these office hours as well, um, Send me a message, and I'd like to reserve a slot for you. Um, trying to just do drop-in stuff usually tends to be a little messy here if I get a bunch of people trying to meet at the exact same time. So these are the standing hours I plan to be around. I'll be at my desk, can answer questions real quick. Um, but shoot me a message, and I'll reserve a 15, 20-minute slot for you, um, and we can meet up there. Um, we can meet virtually via Discord is my preference, or we can do Zoom as well. Um, Zoom's perfectly fine. I just, I'm just i usually on Discord, so I have my own Discord server. You can follow the link here and sign up for it. Um, it is optional, but Discord's a great place to ask questions and get answers in more of a you know modern format rather than our discussion boards. So we've got that. As for the course, we have three different online sections. So there's 90 of you folks uh, with an additional 30 more starting late September for the 12-week course, all online asynchronous here. So our classroom is Desire to Learn, our OCC site, which I think you've all found because you're here. Uh, the course description, this is copy-paste out of the catalog, nothing interesting there. Um, some outcomes here. Uh, critical thinking is actually super important when it comes to programming and uh, learning how to take the skills and techniques and tools that we've learned and apply them to our particular task of solving problems. And then some common course outcomes, no matter who teaches the course, uh, these things will be covered in one fashion or another and even assessed as part of our accreditation process. It's sort of interesting, um, but it probably won't make a lot of sense now if you haven't done much Java before. So we'll skip over those for now. For our textbook here, uh, I'm not a big fan of Pearson and them gouging us and charging all sorts of money here. So uh, we have a friend who has a free open educational resource, or OER. It's a little textbook here. This one is uh, does a really nice job of it here. So this is our Intro to Programming book here, um, version 9, thanks to Mr. Eck. So he is awesome. So we'll be using his book here I would recommend just the website. If you like a physical book, you can get a physical book here. He's got some options for you if you'd like. Um, totally up to you, but we'll try just using his site for now. We'll see how well that goes this semester. Um, so some other materials that we're going to use, we're going to use GitHub. GitHub is a hosting provider of the Git source control tool. I'll do a whole other video here talking about Git and GitHub this week, uh, so don't stress about it right now. We'll use the GitHub desktop client to communicate and synchronize with the GitHub cloud. So the idea with the GitHub source control system is there's the cloud central repository, cloud service, and then we will synchronize our local copies of those repositories just a folder with the cloud. And I'll show you the whole process, not too big of a deal. Um, you can use Discord for my office hours, asking other questions, working with classmates, that sort of thing. Um, if you like Discord, great. If you don't like it, you don't have to use it. But uh, I, I think it's pretty handy. And then hopefully we can sort of build up some sort of community here. I've got several semesters worth of students in Discord now. So we can, if we find cool job opportunities or nice places that have internships, we can share those and hopefully just benefit each other. The main program we're going to use for writing our Java programs is IntelliJ. Their community edition is perfectly fine. You can get other versions that are licensed with student licenses, but it's usually a big hassle, and we don't really need any of the extra stuff that it does. So we'll do the IntelliJ um, IDEA tool here, and we'll, I'll have another video showing you how to download all these tools in a little while here. And then later on in the semester, we're going to use Scene Builder. So I prefer Scene Builder when building graphical user interface applications. Uh, our textbook doesn't do that. And, and there's really two different approaches here. So we'll look at the text version, and then we'll look at the Scene Builder version, or approach of solving these problems, and both will work. Now, if you don't like installing stuff, you can use the virtual desktop. Uh, there's a link here to install the Horizon VMware client, and that'll get you access to the college virtual machines that you can use. Now, the only downside with those is they don't store anything locally. So if you want to save a file, you either need to save it to some sort of flash drive that you have plugged in, or I'll show you how we can use GitHub to get all of your code out on the GitHub cloud and be synced there. Either one's perfectly fine for you. Uh, now, for some specific policies and procedures, I am really big on being anti-cheating. 
here because I think you shouldn't cheat and get a college degree. And really, it's in your best interest for your friends not to cheat either, or fellow classmates, because if you cheat your way through school and don't know how to do anything, and you get hired by an organization, they're going to say, oh, you've got a degree from so-and-so, you probably learned all these things, and when you don't know how to do any of this stuff because you cheated your way through, they'll think the school, us here, did a terrible job teaching you and won't want to hire other graduates. So if people cheat their way through school, it devalues that degree for everyone. So um, our policy here for the course is any student engaging in academic dishonesty will receive a failing grade for the course and be reported to the dean's office. Our deans keep a list here of people who've engaged in academic dishonesty, and there's a three-strike policy, three strikes, and you are no longer welcome to be a student here at OCC. We do take this very seriously. So if you're unsure, though, please ask me. I'm happy to answer questions here. Um, you've got all sorts of different ways to contact me, so just let me know if you're not sure. I'm uh, happy to make sure um, we don't fall afoul of this here. So under no circumstances may Chegg.com or similar sites be used. Don't post questions there. Don't sign answers posted there. Any use of Chegg or similar websites is considered academic misconduct. Chegg is just terrible. They're awful people. I hope they go out of business. Uh, they're getting sued right now, but also by Pearson, who I don't like either. Um, but hopefully neither of them win. Uh, they're just awful. So that being said, I know there are websites like Stack Overflow. I make a lot of money as a software engineer, and I use Stack Overflow all the time because no one has ever said, hey, Eric, please go write some code. and don't ever use any resources. Don't look anything up, just do it off the top of your head. It doesn't work like that, I get it, but this is academia. So if you use someone else's material, you have to cite your source. So our OCC handbook, um, copy paste here, mostly what happens is plagiarism, where you present another individual's ideas, data, words, or images, or products without giving credit to the originator. Right? That's the biggest thing that, that I usually see. Um, acquisition of tests or other academic materials or distribution, that is posting stuff on JEG. Right? Posting it on check is a violation of the policy immediately. But most of the time, people found something online and they used it without giving credit. Right? Part of my job here is to come up with assignments that you can't go Google and answer for. If you could Google and answer for it, I probably shouldn't give it to you as an assignment. Right? So I'm going to give you assignments you generally shouldn't be able to Google. But if you go find a small little snippet, hey, I found this little piece of code that does one particular thing that solves one small part of that problem. Perfectly fine. I get it. There's no big deal here. We'll cite your source and you're good. I'm going to tell you how to do all that. Don't worry about it. So just let me know if you have questions. Ask if you're unsure. Um, I get this excuse all the time that people are like, well, I didn't know how to cite a source. That's a bunch of crap. So you have all sorts of ways of contacting me. You can ask. So um, let's just not cheat, right? You're taking the class to learn the material. So the only way you're going to learn it is by practicing it. And that's what we're going to do. Um, some student code of conduct stuff. This is copy paste. It's silly because we're an online class. What people seem to care about is our grading policy. So we'll have lab assignments pretty much every week. that will be worth 10% of your overall score. So the labs themselves make up a category. So even though labs are worth 10 points and quizzes are worth a different number of points and projects are worth a different number of points, the points only matter in that category. So all the labs total together will make up 10% of your total score in the class. The projects that you work on, the individual projects, will be 30% of your overall score. Right? So this is working on code. Right? The only way to get better at writing code is by writing code, not just reading about it. So we're going to be doing a lot of coding here. We'll have quizzes every week, uh, these chapter quizzes. Honestly, this is your incentive to go and read the book. It's open book, open notes, open internet quizzes here. I just want you going and reading the material. You don't need to memorize anything, right? You, no one ever asks you to do stuff from memory in the industry. That'd be silly. So just know where to go find the information if you need to go know more about it. That's all that happens. That's all it is. I'll have a single exam, just one midterm exam worth 10% of your overall score. I can try not to make this weighted very heavily because I think exams are dumb. But that's just my opinion, and everyone else is welcome to their opinion, even if they're wrong. And I'll have a final project. This is 40% of your overall score, so you cannot pass the class without completing the final project. That's, that's intentional here. So this kind of pulls together all the things we've done in the class and... We do something, it, I think it's a little bit interesting, a little bit fun. Um, you know, if you're not into games, then maybe you're not very interested into it, but that's okay. Um, it should be a, a decent thing. And this is the last month of class. So don't feel like it's going to be a big time pressure here. We'll have a whole month to work on it. We'll have some additional class time to work on it. And I'll be meeting with you folks throughout um, to make sure you're pointed in the right direction and making progress. So overall, those weights should make up 100% of your overall score in the class. And then this letter grade scale, which percentage you get to what letter um, is standard, if you do want a WS mark after the official drop period, you do need to ask. I don't give those out automatically. So if you are failing the class, you will get a failure, an F, unless you ask me for a WS. Because that's sort of how it's supposed to work. Right? Um, the N mark, if you haven't turned anything in by, I think it's the third week of class here, you're likely to get an N. 
and um, otherwise you don't need to worry about it here. In terms of late work, I don't take stuff late, especially with these online async classes here, because I will post solutions to the assignments right the day they're, when they're due. So they're going to be due 11.59 p.m. on Mondays, and then Tuesday, right about midnight or so, sometimes it's like 1, 2 in the morning, depending on when I go to bed, um, the answer will be out there. So I can't take anything late here. So please work, uh, or please plan accordingly, and we'll go from there. In terms of um, educational privacy rights, I will tell you to go look in D2L for everything. I can't give away any sort of information. Uh, if you need any sort of accommodations to the Americans with Disabilities Act, please contact the Access Office and have them send me the paperwork. Happy to work with you. Um, most accommodations that I've seen tend to be additional times on quizzes and exams, and none of the quizzes and exams are timed. So it probably won't be an issue, but if there's something, please let me know. Talk with Access and have them send me over the, the paperwork, and happy to work with you there. Um, our academic support center is fantastic. They have free, uh, free is probably not the right word here. They have no additional charge tutoring um, that you can schedule here. So this is our fall uh, schedule here. So we have uh, Ms. Rika, um, Sajid, and Tim. You can book virtual appointments to tutor. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't use Sajid. Uh, but Tim and Rika are fantastic tutors for 1500 So you can get free appointments with them. Now, uh, it's not really free because like your tuition and tax dollars have paid for this service here, but no additional charge. And just make sure you keep your appointments. If you miss too many appointments, they'll, they'll revoke your tutoring privileges here. So uh, feel free to reach out to the Academic Support Center and you can go from there. Um, D2L, if you have a D2L technical issues, call them. Anything content-wise is all me. Uh, our technology appropriate use regulations, don't do stupid stuff with college resources or you'll lose access to them. Netiquette's important, let's all be kind to each other. If you need help with public safety, I'm happy to help you out here. But again, it's an online class. We're probably not doing a whole lot here. Uh, in terms of me, I try and have things graded within a week of when they're due. If you've read my reviews online, I'm bad at this. And I'm really sorry, I'm working on it here. Um, so it should be within a week of when it's due. And hopefully won't be having a baby this semester. So that will mess everything up and things will go well. So we'll see how, he's five weeks old, uh, or five and a half weeks old now. So see how it goes. Uh, in terms of response, if you email, call, text, um, you know, find me in Discord, it, within 24 hours or less, almost all the time, um, if there's some sort of emergency, I'll try and post a notice somewhere so you folks know. But um, I, like any good millennial, I'm an addict to my phone, and I have it all the time. So I'll, I'll usually respond relatively quickly. Um, if you haven't heard from me, please reach out again. It's possible I just lost it in the pile. Uh, my younger son, not the youngest, not the baby, but the younger son likes watching YouTube kids' videos on my phone, and sometimes he swipes notifications away, and I might miss something. So reach out again. It's not a bother at all. All right, and our tentative schedule. Uh, the goal is to start Tuesdays at midnight, except this week because of the storms here, and we'll end Monday at 11.59 p.m. So we'll go through the syllabus and chapter one this week, chapter two next week, chapter three the next two weeks, then chapter four, chapter five for the next two weeks, chapter seven, chapter eight. So we skip over chapter six, we'll come back to it, and then the midterm week is a little later in the semester, uh, so it happens to be the week that I'm out at Disney World with the family, um, so it should be a, a light week for you. Again, the midterm's designed so that if I wanted you to be able to sit and take it in a single class sitting, you'd be able to do that. But you've got all week to do it. It's open book, open notes. You can start it. You can go back to it anytime you want, just like the chapter quizzes. It's meant to be low stress. I just need to be able to evaluate at this point in time how you're doing here. And then we'll get into chapter 11, just parts of chapter 11. And then we'll come back in November. Um, sorry, not come back, but in November, we'll start the final project. So the November 15th, we start our GUI programming, our graphical user interface programming. And that's what our final project is based on. We'll be off the entire week for Thanksgiving, which is awesome. Um, I know it's only Thursday and maybe some Friday weekend stuff, so um, you'll still have time to work on the final project, I'm assuming. I feel a little bad uh, asking you to do stuff then, but um, you've got a lot of time to work on it there. And then we'll pick up chapter 13, and then we'll have additional final project work time. This last week of class is set aside just for you folks to do this, and you can uh, meet with me, and I can make sure you point in the right direction, do a little touch base. And then on the 12th, then, we'll have the project be due, and we'll schedule individual presentations via Zoom. Or I might try and have some time slots where you can watch a, a couple classmates present. Um, usually, if we did this in person, the whole class presents to each other. And it's really fun to see. Everyone has a slightly different take on the final project, which is really fun. And it's really the art of programming, is everyone designs a little differently. It's really cool to see. Now, it is subject to revision. So if you have uh, if changes need to be made, I will let you know best I can. All right, well, that's it for the syllabus. I'm looking forward to the semester. If you have any questions, thoughts, or concerns, let me know. You folks, take care.